Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with a daily race at Spa from last week's daily race C. So starting from pole position, myself driving the Ferrari. We've got some very fast drivers in this lobby with us. Faith of Asuka and P3 Zavizic. I think, I don't know how to say it properly still, but um, yeah, a fast lobby. WDP also in this lobby, down in P5. A very competitive lobby for a daily race and this it really does um, emphasise the point that I wish they'd do something to um, make this... Daily, like daily races this competitive all the time because a lot of this is very rare to see a daily race at this time of day as well with um, quite a competitive edge probably because we were streaming so a lot of people doing a bit of stream sniping but you see starting the race in P1 advantage to P1 is you start about 1.7 1.8 seconds ahead into turn 1 which is something that I really think Polyphonic need to get on top of they need to do something about the rolling starts at many locations I think we need to cite the 2x2 two rolling start from the world tour that we've seen where um, they all pretty much start on the start straight and everyone there's no real ma there's not a massive loss on, at the moment you can see it's quite a big advantage as we mess up um, the top of the hill there and actually give p2 the slipstream down the street which is not what you want to do with the Lamborghini following you see myself trying to break that slipstream slightly there we've got a short shift at the same time so trying to push while trying to make sure that the fuel is okay because this race was very much a no-stop race I think it was about 10 seconds faster to do a no stop than it was to do a one stop no matter how you did it i tried you know various ways of doing it and the no stop was just a lot faster pretty much no matter what car you tried it with unless the car was terrible on fuel you could uh, make a no stop faster than the one stop as we go through these very nice corners at spa i do love the flow of spa the way you throw it in from corner to corner you've really got to get into the rhythm and be very smooth um, gentle and let it coast you'll see through this corner we coast through the corner then slowly back on the throttle you can see building that gap up nearly back up to 1.5 second margin unfortunately that lamborghini on the straight so fast compared to the ferrari the ferrari did receive that um a nerf quite a while ago it was when the lamborghini also received the nerf however because the Lamborghini was so fast anyway, it didn't really affect the Lamborghini as much as it did the Ferrari. So the Ferrari is now down to Porsche kind of speeds, whereas the Lamborghini is just quite a bit faster than um, the, the, the Ferrari. You will see on the straights, when we get to the straight zones, Lamborghini is able to just get right back into that slipstream and then start doing the fuel saving, which is what it needs to do though, because the Ferrari, the main strength of this car, the reason why I really liked it in this track was one, because it handled very good and two the fuel the fuel was pretty much overpowered really and we worked this out at kyoto when we were testing out cars the ferrari, the ferrari has insane ability when short shifting it and it keeps reasonable speed as we go through that final corner you see getting very close p2 there is getting that slipstream all the way into the final chicane and going over the line and still in p1 that's a good start obviously you want to keep that lead one thing I didn't really want to do was get dirty air. I think the Ferrari's ability to short shift and save fuel was quite a bit better than the Lamborghini. So what the Lamborghini's got to do in this race is sit behind and be very patient for a few laps. Try and let themselves build up that fuel and save it for maybe one last push at the end or something like that. That was the way to do it with the Lamborghini. I think you just had to try and sit in the slipstream, save your fuel and then push towards it. You can see P3 has dropped out of the slipstream and that has really affected him. Um, because he's not able to shoot, like save the fuel as well as he would like, then that is an issue with the game though because of the way it starts at the start of the race. So unfortunately P3 probably had just as good pace as um, ourselves, if not better. Um, unfortunately wasn't able to utilise it because you need to be in the slipstream with that Lamborghini. If you get in the toe, short shift and save the fuel. At the moment you can see that he's just not able to do that properly. However, it won't take long if there is any battling between myself and P2. P3 should be right back in the mix um, very quickly because you only need to be within 1.5 seconds of the slipstream on this game now to pick up um, the draft down the straight. So 1.5 seconds behind the car in front and you will start getting the draft from that car, which in my opinion is a little bit too much. I kind of wish they'd go back to maybe a little bit closer to the old system with around 7, 8 tenths of a second. Um, because of this new system, when you're in high downforce cars, obviously you're getting a loss of aero for 1.5 seconds. However, we are due to get an update on the game, I believe, very soon, maybe this month or next month, that is going to change the aero. According to Tijini, that was anyway, he did mention in the chat that they are going to alter the draft. Um, I'm not sure about the distance of it, but the effects of following another car in that slipstream is going to get altered. So that could be quite nice, and hopefully that will encourage better racing as well in the future. As we go now down into the final chicane, 
for the second time. Lap two, you see, just trying to keep a con concentration going here. Short shifting, trying to maintain the fuel. The main thing you've got to do in these races where it's a fuel saving um, race is not get lured into that um, pushing too hard and using your fuel up. So you can see at the moment, we're doing a pretty good job. We're gonna go over the line and it's just about where it should be. Remember that as you go on and the car gets lighter, it's fuel economy will become better on this game. So towards, you know, by lap six, if it's saying that you're on to, on schedule for the fuel, that's that should be fine. You will, you'll have no worries, obviously. Um, even if it's slightly behind, you'll find that you'll just use a little bit less if you go through some final laps as we go through now. Skipping ahead to at the end of lap four, you can see that Fairly static for a nice consistent drive and we've done a 19.5, a 19.4 and now on lap 4 we're doing a fairly solid lap here. It has that Lamborghini getting very close in this game but just not able to get on the powers early with the line that I took. Going over the line with a 19.1, a fairly solid lap, very consistent drive with the Ferrari as you know, we've got no slipstream. This is just the out and outright pace of the Ferrari when you're pushing reasonably hard. Obviously keeping the fuel in very good condition, you can see we've got 4 laps of fuel left at this point. Um, we're past the start finishing line so fuel is looking very solid at this point in the race we've got we've, we've kept control of it we've not overdriven the car as we go up the hill now hitting that apex quite nicely at the top of the hill cutting it pretty much perfectly and took reasonably good speed up there however look behind and what you're going to see now is how fast that Lamborghini is just look at this there is no defense you can do from the Ferrari you can see me is it showing the, my arm clearly not much I can do, I've just got to let him go there and just tuck him behind him now. Maybe do a bit of short shifting as well. However, what you're going to see now is I was able to follow very closely to that Lamborghini because once that Lamborghini was in the lead, he wasn't able to keep as much speed while saving fuel. So it did show me that the Ferrari was a much better car when it was you know, out in the open air. Maybe on that lap one, if I didn't make that slight mistake at the top of the hill and kept the, the gap to about 1.7 seconds, 1.8, I think the Ferrari might have been able to pull away and that Lamborghini would have suffered with the fuel have been able to short shift um, and save the fuel, which is why now you can see I'm all over the rear trying to find a way past. I need to get back ahead because I know that P3 is very, very fast around here. We had done a few races in this day. Um, I didn't win them all, obviously. This was probably the closest race and one of my better races that for consistency as we see P3 getting a little bit closer now. I'm definitely getting held up. You can see I'm all over the rear of that Lamborghini, unfortunately. On the power zones, nothing the Ferrari can do in terms of getting past. I need to try and find a way past the slipstream and maybe outbreak um, the Lamborghini into one of the slower corners as we now head on to the end of lap. And you can see in that rear view there, on that on that TV camera, you could see P3 getting ever closer through the corners and probably now in the slipstream range. So now that he's in the slipstream range, he's going to be able to get very close and bring himself into a three-way battle for this lead as we go into the final corner. I'm going to have a little look up the inside. Can we break very late? We break nice and late, but we've got to try and make sure we make the corner still. Giving P1 Fatal enough space there on the inside and trying to undercut him a bit and work him to the outside. But unfortunately, not got the power now to make it, this move work. So we're going to have to, again, let P1 tuck him. No point having a look up the inside. I did have a little look there to see if I can make a move, but unfortunately... It just didn't have the power to, um, you know, it wasn't in the position to really dive up the inside there. So now I'm going to have to rethink, do I just now follow behind? We're going to try and keep the distance around 3, 4, 10 because you don't want to be a tenth behind through these corners now. You, you know, it would be a disaster. This is a perfect range where we are now. Into sixth gear, carrying really good speed at the top of the old Lamborghini. Having to short shift just hasn't got the speed now because he's got to save some fuel. I'm going to go to the right side. Wasn't sure which side he was going to go. You can see me hesitating which way. And now it's a drag race into this right-hand corner. We're side by side. Looks like that Lamborghini's coming back a bit. However, the Ferrari should be able to hold an inside line here. I give him the space on the left. And we managed to hold it all the way around the outside and get ourselves back into the lead of this daily race seat. What a great race this is. And again, the Lamborghini is going to come back. We're going to go defensive on the right side. Fatal is going to try and go around the left-hand side. Manages to hold it on the left-hand side, but can't carry the speed through that corner. One thing about that corner, because it's off camber, you are not able to really make a move on the outside there. You'll just end up running out of road and grip at the same time. So carrying on now, back in the lead, and now we've got to try and settle into routine. You can see the time we lost on lap five with the battling and also being stuck behind Fatal, who obviously had to do a bit more short shifting again and didn't really have the fuel to push. We lost about two seconds on one lap. And again, this lap is going to be a bit slower because obviously we had that battling into the corner to get ourselves back into lead, but it was a very important move. One thing I didn't want to be in a situation was 
stuck in between them two Lamborghinis with the dirty air from the car in front. And then you've got P3, who's going to be very fast down the straight, who will be able to go for a move on me also. Um, so vital that I got myself back into the lead and tried to push a little bit here to try and give myself enough of a gap to hold on to this P1 position in this race. I have to say as well, you know, with these daily races, I wish all daily races were like this with at least three or four drivers that could fight for the lead. It's not always the case. It was probably some of the reasons because I started streaming as well. So obviously when I started streaming, a few of the fast drivers will join into the daily race and it just made it so much more entertaining. You can see we had a few races. Some of them didn't go my way. I think Beta um, won one, I think Zavich won one. It was fairly um, equal all the way between all three of us as we go through that final corner there. Look how close that was. All three cars within about six, seven tenths of each other going into the final corner now. Sorry, into turn one. Six, seven tenths of a second between all three cars here, you can see. Going through turn one, trying to make sure I get the power very early, you can see. Actually doing that very nice and get them really accelerating out of that corner, using a bit more fuel up than what I probably would have liked. But I'm doing that to try and give myself the edge and a bit of a boost going up the hill now so that we've got the gap to cover and defend into this right corner this was pretty much the main overtaking opportunity at spa um, the strength of the slipstream on gt sport really made it an opportunity to go for a move into this right hand corner but you see looks like we've got the gap covered this time it looks like faith was having to do a bit of fuel saving i think his fuel was running very low towards the end of this race um, maybe if he wouldn't have gone for that overtake where he didn't just sat behind us and save this fuel he might have had more of a chance of going for a move on this lap as we run a little bit wide there just about managed to hang on to the car and now into the heavy braking zone you can see in that bottom left hand corner how close this race is now on the tv replay camera all three cars we're in with a chance of winning this race that's the thing about spa when it's a fuel saving race it's very tactical i would have rather than had a, the settings a little bit different i think this race could have been better if it would have been at least one lap longer and maybe even kept the settings like this so you had to do even more fuel saving so you'd be even slower every lap and then the one stop might or even maybe increase the tire wear as well with the current fuel setting so that the one stop might have actually been the way to go because you would have been that little bit faster it might have been a more enjoyable race because i would have rather seen multiple strategies working however for this race it was pretty clear that a no stop strategy was the way to go i think you would get like i said before it was about 10 seconds faster over the race so pushing on now about to start the final lap of the race you see coming to the end of lap seven managed to get that gap to quite a solid margin to fatal behind i think he's suffering with fuel he's also got to be a little bit a little bit defensive in his driving because he's got another lamborghini right behind him ready to make a move if he makes a mistake so this is to the advantage of myself all i've got to try and do now is get a solid exit from this chicane and then a very nice turn one to build myself up a bit of a gap as you can see fatal went a little bit deep into that corner that's going to give me a nice drive out of this corner and build that gap up even more you can see the gap has increased there now we've actually got a very solid lead into turn one this should be okay if we can hold on to the lead by the end of the long straight into the right hand corner then you've got a very good chance of winning the race because obviously there's only pretty much one or two overtaking opportunities at spa i think this one up here and then at the end of the lap into the chicane if someone wants to go for a dive you can make a move there however we've managed to build up nearly a second lead here now you can see about eight tenths nine tenths of a lead and that is enough at this track to secure yourself into this right hand corner it's not you can't really gain eight or nine tenths in the slipstream even though we're doing the short shifting and you can see in that mirror there, I think P3 made a mistake on the chicane on the previous lap at the end of the lap and nearly actually binned it. So he's lost a bit of time there. Now we've just got to keep this nice and smooth through these corners. It looks like Fatal just doesn't have the fuel to 100% push all the way to the end of this race. So as long as we keep it nice and clean through this middle sector, keeping it as you know as steady as possible because you don't want to push too hard now. The Ferrari obviously not particularly great on tyres. However, if you run the bias all the way to the front like I did, five to the front, be very cautious on throttle, try and keep it smooth, keep your lap times consistent. The car is still drivable at the end of the stint, it intended to be reasonable on lap eight still, you can see. Back into the 19s on lap seven, you can see that really does show you that the, the, the amount of time we lost with that battle and, and also being stuck behind the Lamborghini for that lap where he didn't really have the fuel to push. So, this race would have been a very, very, if I would have held on to P1 all the way through, I think it would have been one of my most consistent and probably fastest paced races I'd done. I think we might have crept into the 39s if you have a little look at by the time we get to the end of the race, you can see keeping it nice and smooth through here. And this lap also looking like it's going to just about creep back into the 2 minutes 19s. It's on for a, a, a mid to 
late two minutes 19 obviously now in the lead in this race 1.1 second lead we're going to take it very easy on that final chicane there's going to be no risk made no point risking anything we've got a solid lead to p2 just got to make sure that we hook this corner up taking it nice and easy and now into the final corner making sure i break nice and early and we're going to get quite a solid win from this daily race see obviously um, quite an enjoyable race actually i thoroughly enjoyed this race it was quite an entertaining stream um, we didn't didn't go our way on every race we made a few mistakes we ran out of few, we got low on fuel in other situations but this race kept it really smooth and went over with an 18 minutes 43 i think that would have crept into the 39 seconds if we'd have kept it in the lead you know if we would have been on on our own with no one else behind us would have definitely have got that into the 39s the car was definitely good enough for doing that but a solid race enjoyable race with very fast drivers behind us thoroughly enjoyable um, hope you enjoyed that as well make sure you hit that subscribe button with the link on the screen at the moment if you haven't already subscribed and also hit that notification button so you don't miss any future videos thanks again for watching everyone